This is part 33 of Angular 2 tutorial. In part 32 of this video series, we discussed what is dependency injection and how it is implemented in Angular. In this video, we'll discuss why should we use dependency injection and the benefits it provides. So let's understand this with a very simple example. Let's say we want to build a computer. In reality, to build a computer, we might need several objects like processor, RAM, hard disk drive, etc. To keep our example simple, let's say we just need a processor object to build a computer. So our computer and processor classes are as shown right here. Notice at the moment we are not using any dependency injection. Computer class has a dependency on the processor class. So to build a computer, we need a processor object and the computer class itself is creating an instance of the processor class using the new keyword. This is the programming style that most of us are used to and it is easy to understand as well. But there are three fundamental problems with this piece of code. So let's understand what these problems are and how dependency injection solves them. This code is difficult to maintain over time. In just a bit, we'll understand why this code is difficult to maintain with an example. Now, if you look at this computer class, it has a dependency on the processor class. And here, the computer class is creating an instance of the dependency, that is, an instance of the processor class itself. Now, this processor instance is local to this computer class. So we cannot use this processor instance to share data and logic with other objects. So to generalize this, we can say instances of dependencies created by a class that needs those dependencies are local to the class and cannot share data and logic. Again, if this is not clear at the moment, don't worry. We'll understand this with an example in just a bit. And finally, this piece of code is also hard to unit test and we'll understand why in just a bit. So let's understand these problems in detail one by one and also see how dependency injection can solve them. First, let's understand why this code is difficult to maintain over time. At the moment, this is how a computer and processor classes looks like. Notice at the moment, the processor class constructor does not have any parameters. And within the computer class, to create an instance of the processor class, we're using its empty constructor. So everything works, no compilation errors whatsoever. Now let's say our requirements have changed and for us to be able to create an instance of this processor class, we need to tell it the speed. One way to address this requirement is by introducing a parameter to the processor class constructor. So we are passing speed to the processor class constructor. The moment we make this change, the computer class breaks because here we are creating an instance of the processor class using its empty constructor. And at the moment, the processor class does not have any empty constructor. To be able to create an instance of the processor class, we will have to supply a value for this parameter. Otherwise, we get a compilation error. So every time the processor class changes, the computer class also need to change. And here, we have shown a dependency on only one object, that is processor. But in reality, to build a computer, it may have dependency on several other objects like memory, hard disk drive, etc. So those dependencies in turn may also have other dependencies. And any time these dependencies change, the computer class may also need to change. Hence, this code is difficult to maintain over time. Here is that same piece of code that we have seen on the slide. At the moment, the processor class constructor does not have any parameters. And within the computer class, we are using the empty constructor to create an instance of the processor. So all works, no compilation errors whatsoever. Now, the moment we introduce a parameter to the processor class constructor, we get a compilation error. Notice we have a red squiggly indicating that we have an error. So every time the processor class changes, the computer class also need to change. Hence, this code is difficult to maintain over time. Now, let's see how dependency injection can solve this problem. But before that, let's understand why do we have this problem. The reason we have this problem is because the computer class itself is creating an instance of its dependency, in this case, an instance of the processor class. 
Instead, if an external source can create an instance of this processor class and provide it to the computer class, then this problem can be very easily solved. And that's exactly what dependency injection does. And on this slide right here, we can see the same example rewritten using dependency injection. Notice with dependency injection, the computer class itself is not directly creating an instance of the processor class. Instead, it just specified it has a dependency on the processor class using its constructor. Now, an external source, that is the Angular injector in this case, is going to create an instance of the processor class and provide it to the computer class when required. Because now we have an external source that is creating and injecting the dependencies required by the computer class, whenever those dependencies change, the computer class need not change. And here we have another example. Notice here, we have changed the dependency, that is the processor class, by introducing speed parameter. But notice, the code within the computer class has not changed in any way. So bottom line, with dependency injection, we have an external source that is creating and injecting dependencies when required. So when these dependencies change, the computer class need not change. Here is that same example. Notice at the moment, we are using dependency injection. We discussed what is dependency injection and how it is implemented in Angular in our previous video. For you to understand this example better, please first watch that video. Now notice when the dependency, that is the processor class changes, we don't have to change the computer class because now with dependency injection, the computer class is not directly creating an instance of the processor class. So that is one of the benefits of dependency injection. When the dependencies change, the computer class need not change. Now let's understand the second problem. Instances of dependencies created by a class that needs those dependencies are local to the class and cannot share data and logic. So if we relate this to our example, the processor instance created by the computer class is local to that computer class. That means we cannot share that processor object with other objects. Sharing a processor object doesn't make much sense. So let's understand this with another example. Now let's say we have a service called user preferences service that keeps track of user preferences like color, font size, etc. Now what we want to be able to do is share this user preferences data across all components within our application. Now in the component class, if we create an instance of this user preference service class using the new keyword like we did in the computer class, then that component is going to get a local instance of that user preference service and the data it has cannot be shared by other components. So for example, if we have 10 components, we end up creating 10 instances of this service, one for each component and that instance is local to that component which has created it. So the data and functionality it has cannot be shared by other components. Now let's see how dependency injection is going to solve this problem. With DI, the Angular injector provides a singleton, that is a single instance of the service. Let's understand this with an example. Let's say we have a component called component1 which needs an instance of this user preference service. Now the component itself is not going to create an instance of that service because we are using dependency injection. So the Angular injector is going to create and inject the service instance into component one. So the first thing the Angular injector does is, all right, you need an instance of user preference service. So first let me check if I already have an instance. In this case, it doesn't because this is the first component that has requested it. So the Angular injector is going to create an instance of the user preference service and inject that into component one. Now, we have another component, component two, which needs an instance of user preference service. So the Angular injector again does the same check. Do I already have an existing instance? In this case, it does. So it's going to provide that existing instance to component two. Along the same lines, if another component requires the user preference service instance, it's going to inject that same existing instance into that component as well. So in this case, the same service instance is being shared by all the components. So sharing data and logic becomes much easier. 
If this example is a bit difficult to digest, please do not worry. In our next video, we'll discuss the same thing with a working example and it should be much clearer at that point. Now let's understand our third problem. Why is this piece of code hard to unit test? Here the computer class itself is creating an instance of its dependency. In this case, an instance of the processor class. So this makes it difficult to mock the processor object which in turn makes it difficult unit testing computer class. At the moment, the computer class has only one dependency that is a dependency on the processor but in a real world application it may have several dependencies and those dependencies in turn can have other dependencies. With all these hierarchies of dependencies, just imagine how complicated the unit testing can become if we do not have the ability to mock those dependencies. With dependency injection, it is very easy to mock dependencies. In fact, that is one of the greatest benefits of dependency injection. Now, if you are new to unit testing and mocking, it may be difficult for you to understand why unit testing can get difficult and complicated if we don't have the ability to mock dependencies. In our upcoming videos, we'll discuss unit testing and mocking in detail, so at that point, it should be much clearer. So, in summary, here are the three main benefits provided by DI. Create applications that are easy to write and maintain over time as the application evolves. Easy to share data and functionality as the Angular injector provides a singleton, that is, a single instance of the service. Easy to write and maintain unit tests as the dependencies can be very easily mocked. Thank you for listening and have a great day.